Hello and welcome to this webinar on Red Hat Quay and OpenShift, how to run Quay on and how to use Quay with OpenShift. My name is Dirk Hermann. I'm the product manager of Quay, and I have with me Andy Block, who is one of our leading experts in delivering Quay in real-life deployment in customer environments. And at the same time, he wrote a couple of things. He wrote the initial prototypes for some of the stuff we will talk about in this presentation. And again, he's one of the experts for both OpenShift and Quay. With that, let me start with a high-level slide explaining um, why OpenShift is one of our focus areas looking at it from a Quay side. Yeah, so OpenShift is our enterprise Kubernetes um, distribution provided by Red Hat, and it's our primary target destination. Yeah, so and we want to ensure that right, although Quay runs on any infrastructure, it runs best on OpenShift. So all the integration and improvements we did in order to deploy and manage and operate Quay, of course, are focusing on the Kubernetes capabilities and the OpenShift capabilities built on top of it. So the Quay operator is supposed to ensure a seamless deployment and ongoing management of Quay if it runs on OpenShift. We also added to other operators. We will talk about a little bit more detail in this presentation, such as the container security operator, which brings the Quay and Claire vulnerability data into Kubernetes or OpenShift and then expose it within the OpenShift console. And another operator we just introduced yesterday is the Quay bridge operator, which is supposed to ensure a seamless integration and user experience for all the different OpenShift workflows. By default, Quay has been written to serve content to one or more OpenShift clusters. So the more OpenShift cluster is probably the more appropriate use case for Quay, wherever they're running. So this doesn't matter. Quay runs on any infrastructure, both on-prem and public cloud. OpenShift the same. So it's a perfect fit if both are used together. There are a couple of benefits of Quay running on OpenShift compared with Quay running on standalone container host. This is still possible. It's still supported. Yeah, but of course, running on OpenShift means running on Kubernetes. And there are a couple of great benefits coming out. So you can effectively, from zero to hero, you can simplify your deployment and get started to, to use the product effectively immediately. Scalability, you can leverage all the, the cluster compute capacity management coming out of Kubernetes and OpenShift to automatically scale up and scale down. You have a simplified configuration for networking, storage, all the entities which are managed by the orchestration platform or the, in the OpenShift in this case. You have a better way to deal with all the configurations which are centrally stored in etcd. And of course, everything you do once, you typically do it more than once, so repeatable uh, re repeatability is another important point. And then we, of course, try also to leverage all the ex expanded options of OpenShift. So all the great capabilities OpenShift provides, which are not by default included in a plain upstream Kubernetes um, environment, but provided by OpenShift. And that's why it's worth for us to leverage them. Our focus, and as I mentioned, you can run Quay on standalone host. Uh, you can use it on standalone host. It doesn't matter. However, our focus for deploying and managing and containerized application are operators. Yeah, so this is really uh, a company-wide focus, and OpenShift is the leading uh, element driving this this container or uh, Kubernetes uh, um, operator adoption, and we are following it. So the focus and direction of the product are Kubernetes operators. That's why we built the three operators we have in the meantime. The third one is what we launched yesterday. And we can't afford to maintain another solution for standalone host. It's probably not worth the time. And probably with the next major release of Quay, Quay version 4, it will be Kubernetes only, because we really believe that Kubernetes is the future for containerized applications. There isn't any other option or choice anymore. In the meantime, we have three different operators. We have the Quay operator we introduced with 3.1. We have the container security operator, and we have the bridge operator. The Quay operator is really for the deployment and ongoing management of Quay, and it's supposed to run on the cluster, on the OpenShift cluster Quay is running on. In contrast to the container security operator and Quay bridge operator, those are two operators which are supposed to run on all the OpenShift clusters Quay is serving content to, which could be the same in a single cluster setup. But typically, as I said, Quay is used to serve content to many clusters uh, across the globe. And that's why the uh, container security operator and Quay bridge operator are probably running on more than one cluster. It's worth to be called out 
that the container security operator works perfectly fine with quite a low, but the query bridge operator does not as of today. It's also important to mention that with all the operators we developed, although they partially might work with OpenShift 3, we are only provide full support on OpenShift 4, primarily because some of the backend dependencies such as OLM are still in tech preview state for OpenShift 3. So we basically made the decision to ensure that we are developing against the most recent and most up-to-date uh, version of our OpenShift container platform, and that's OpenShift 4, which also means that future features we will introduce sometimes depend on newest capabilities we just added to most recent versions of OpenShift. So let's start to have a look um, how to run Quay on OpenShift. But before we talk about the bridge operator, uh, the, the Quay operator, which is supposed to do the deployment, let's quickly talk about some of the prerequisites. And there is a dedicated recording available, which talks about several prerequisites and options, architectural patterns and deployment options. And we will get it out to YouTube pretty quickly as well. Um, just for from an overall standpoint, so Quay can run, as I said, on OpenShift or standalone host. And the default use case, again, is that Quay is serving content to many OpenShift clusters. So this is the default. This is how Quay, Quay has been designed and built to really work at scale across different regions, data centers, and whatever. Um, there was a clear, clear line we need to draw between the components which are supposed to run on cluster versus the ones who are supposed off cluster. And I will dive a little bit deeper into the details on the next slides. But before I talk about the specifics for database and storage, let's have a very quick view on the Reddit Quay architecture. So effectively, the product consists of a couple of container or three, in the meantime, four images and three operators. And those are containers running on OpenShift in this case. So it's the Quay container, it's the Claire container. It could be the Quay builders. This is an optional component. And the same with mirroring workers. So those are other container instances uh, which could run if repo mirroring is used. In front of Quay and Claire, you typically use a load balancer. It could be the HA proxy, which is included in OpenShift. It could be also your own load balancer, which already exists in your environment. The backend dependencies of all the containers of, of Red Hat Quay are stateless components, and the backend dependencies, therefore, are critical, especially for HA. Um, and those are storage and database primarily. So all the metadata is stored in the database backend, and only the binary blobs itself are stored in the storage backend. And then there's a third component, which is worth to be called out, but less critical, which is the Redis cache. Effectively, the tutorial and the build logs, so the Quay build automation logs, are stored in Redis cache. And that's why it's probably less critical than the database and storage. And then underneath, there is an infrastructure. And all the clients and the uh, UI, CLI, API interactions happens typically via a load balancer to Quay and Claire. And all the other components do not need to expose to the outside world. And then again, if the destination target for Quay and its content is an OpenShift container platform, typically on this platform, then the container security operator and the bridge operator is running and then connects uh, on the same way and connection to Quay and Claire, or to Quay mostly. I already mentioned that the Quay builders are supposed to run off cluster as of today. They require the runtime, the Docker runtime, and they don't work with Builder yet. It's a roadmap item which is not there yet. Um, as of today, they can't run. So technically, we got it up and running, uh, but we haven't missed the opportunity to document and also QE test yet. Yeah, so we will probably add the ability to run the Quay builders on OpenShift on bare metal with the upcoming 3.4 version. Um, technically, as I said, it can run, but we do not recommend to do it today, primarily also for security reasons. So builders should run outside. The database is effectively somewhat similar. So the database backend, uh, we have a little bit more degree of freedom for Quay, but Claire is currently limited to Postgres, and that's why we recommend to use Postgres for both Quay and Claire. Um, since Postgres or any database is a stateful application, if a stateful application is running on Kubernetes, we strongly recommend to use an operator. 
Since we as Red Hat do not ship in operator, we therefore recommend to use one of the third party offerings, such as the Crunchy Data Postgres operator, which is one of the operators we are te actively testing against during our QE cycle. So it's fully uh, supported and tested by us. And the joint vendor support as part of the Red Hat operator certification uh, provides additional benefits for customers. If you run Quay on public cloud infrastructure, we recommend to use the Postgres service, uh, which is provided by your cloud provider, which by the way, also applies to storage, Redis cache, and anything else the cloud provider typically offers because then you automatically get the HA capabilities included. One short comment on disconnected or ergot environment. So although Quay runs perfectly fine in an ergot environment, Claire, as of today, does not because it needs to fetch the CVE metadata from all the different metadata sources we are leveraging within, Quay, uh, within Claire. This hopefully will go away with the next release because ergot support for Claire is one of the top priority features for the next release. And with hopefully in other future releases, we will introduce additional capabilities for uh, ergot environments such as repo mirroring. Uh, to disk and export to and, and import from disk and so on. The one of the other the other prerequisite I mentioned is the storage backend. We have a lot of different uh, backend or storage backends we support: AWS S3, Azure Blob, etc. And the recommended uh, storage backend, especially if Quay runs on OpenShift, is of course OpenShift Container Storage. Um, first to be called out that we are not directly connecting to the uh, OCS backend, but we are using the uh, NUMA multi-cloud object gateway object service instead. Yeah, so this is an S3 layer on top of the underlying storage technology, which provides a lot of additional capabilities we are leveraging. And this is pretty important, especially um, for HA setups. And again, the mission critical components for HA setups is the database and storage. And that's why this is probably important. The, uh, how to use the OCS4 version in conjunction with Quay is pretty well documented. So there is a cables article in the customer portal, which explains steps step by step how to um, set up this configuration. It's fairly easy to use because both products are um, managed via an operator in the meantime. And this brings me, so after you've satisfy the prerequisites, you can start to deploy Quay. And the way how we recommend to do so is using the Quay operator. It's worth to be called out that we formally called it the Quay setup operator, but obviously we wanted to change it because the primary purpose of an operator is not the initial deployment only, but really the day two management and stuff. And with the newest release of Red Hat Quay, we introduced a couple of feature we will explain in a min, which caused also renaming it to the Quay operator. And since Andy has written the original prototype of this operator, let me hand over to Andy to explain him, uh, yeah, to let him explain what the operator does. Thanks, Dirk. So like most of any uh, operator in OpenShift, it is recommended and that you use the operation operator lifecycle manager to an operator hub to be able to deploy Quay to, to your environment. Uh, this facilitates the integration of a lot of the role-based access control policies, any dependencies that need to be resolved, as well as the upgrade of the operator itself as soon as a new version becomes available for your cluster to be able to consume. Uh, future versions of the Quay operator will be working to enhance more of the day two operations that are found in a typical Quay deployment. I will be walking through some of those aspects throughout the course of the presentation today. So to be able to deploy the Quay operator on OpenShift, now number one, the operator itself, like most operators, will only run on an OpenShift environment. So that is the first prerequisite you need to have a OpenShift environment. Uh, for those of you who have deployed Quay off of OpenShift, you may be familiar with some of the challenges or lengthy processes for not only setting up and configuring Quay, but also if you are looking to integrate Claire, it also is a bit of a challenge to get all of those pieces all wired up together. Well, obviously, once they are all wired up, you get the benefits of the, of the solution, but some of that initial configuration can be a bit of, of a burden. The operator really goes ahead and facilitates and streamlines all of that, and it is customizable. Uh, I work in a lot of, with a lot of customer environments where they have their own certificate management systems, need to integrate their the customer provided certificates. 
the Quay operator does provide uh, options for being able to inject those configurations uh, through OpenShift and Kubernetes native services like, uh, like Secrets to be able to uh, inject into the operator configuration. Uh, in addition, it will also go ahead and deploy the uh, Postgres databases that will be able to be served by Quay and Claire if you look to deploy that optional configuration, as well as you can provide your own database if you have one already in your environment. Uh, it continues to use a lot of other Kubernetes native features like health checks and monitors, and it will also set up the appropriate route and in external ingress points into the OpenShift environment. Uh, a lot of good features that the Quay operator does automate for you. Now, in version 3.3, we have a lot of new enhancements to the Quay operator. Uh, some of those that I called out earlier was uh, new external in ingress points. Uh, so if you were running, obviously we want you to run an OpenShift, but if you are running for the upstream community, uh, I know a lot of customers who like to, who don't really know anything about OpenShift. They, want, they know about Kubernetes, they want to get their hands on it. We do provide some more Kubernetes and, and, uh, friendly components like node ports and ingresses uh, as external entry points into Quay. Uh, other enhancements that were added as part of version 3.3 is the configuration application does continue to run by default. In prior versions, we spun down the configuration, uh, configuration pod by default, but now we keep it running so that you can have read ready to access to that part of the, part of the ecosystem. Uh, for you to be able to uh, access it if you need to. Uh, user configuration changes can be made after the initial deployment. Uh, you can use the config operator, the config app, pardon me, uh, for entities that the operator does mark as read only. Uh, but you, I have seen some individuals go in and modify the config.yaml file, which is embedded into a secret in OpenShift. We do not recommend that because it will potentially run into an issue where the operator will override some of the features and configurations that you do set. So I would rec not recommend that. But you can go ahead and, and after deployment, modify some of the components of the Quay ecosystem custom resources. Uh, other enhancements uh, regarding some of those enhancements to the Quay custom resources are now, uh, now automatically reconciled by the operator such as the image, the replica count, the CPU, and memory requests for the various components of the Quay ecosystem, as well as some of the Quay Claire configurations. And it means that if the configuration is changed, the Quay uh, operator can be configured to automatically redeploy your Quay uh, components. Uh, like all documentation for all Red Hat products, uh, the latest and greatest can be found within the Red Hat customer portal. And the documentation for the Quay operator consists of the installation of the operator itself, how to, how to deploy the Quay ecosystem resource, how you go ahead and customize that, as well as some of the configurations that you can perform once the configuration has, has the operator has been deployed and Quay has been running for some time. All right. So, now, the most important thing for those of you in more of a delivery function is how to use the Quay, Red Hat Quay, with OpenShift. Uh, this is important. Uh, I've been working with OpenShift for about five, six years before Kubernetes even came out. So I've seen everything from well, some of all the great features that OpenShift has provided that Kubernetes didn't have, so that we can go ahead and now show you how to make use of those components using Quay itself. And like any container registry, Quay is just another external registry that OpenShift can consume from. So some of the things that you can leverage from Quay is to use it for the source and destination for builds that are produced uh, within OpenShift. But most importantly, you're most likely going to be using Quay for your runtime content. This is your operational containers they are gonna be running on a daily basis. And then you look at Quida.io, Quida.io is basically the source for a good majority of the foundational components for OpenShift itself, as well as a number of the images that come with OpenShift. Uh, in addition, from OpenShift's point of view, Quay is just another external registry, which means that you don't, which it means it is a bit of a difference from running and using images that are served by Quay externally versus the internal registry, which means that if you are running a Quay uh, in a Quay itself, pardon me, 
you do not have the uh, automatic R RBAC isolation based on OpenShift cluster permissions. With OpenShift's internal registry, you do have automatic isolation between the different components based on namespaces. That is not, uh, that is not true when it comes to Quay. We're gonna call out some of the differences as we go through the presentation, as well as if you're leveraging an image stream as a source for an image that's stored in Quay, you're not gonna have some of the, the automated components that you would if you were running an image that is being served by OpenShift internal registry. So if you're using Quay with or without the internal registry, Quay can be used with, with as yes, an external registry in front of an entire OpenShift cluster with its registry, which means that you can go ahead and just leverage it like any other, other registry itself, which is basically, it's a source of, of image content and that you use and source appropriately from your different resources within OpenShift. Now, what you can do is you can try to make the first steps towards a long, towards a progression towards replacing the internal registry. And part of this can be facilitated by a new operator that was released as part of version 3.3, the Quay Bridge Operator. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. It, it basically tries to automate a lot of the components that are found uh, with uh, within the OpenShift internal registry and, and with OpenShift itself to be able to manage it all within Quay. Uh, next we have, and this, is, this, and this continues to bite me in the field constantly, and if it's not proxies, it's gonna be certificates at customer delivery sites. Uh, certificate, almost every enterprise customer I have has their own certificate authority or one that is not trusted by a public entity. So you need to tell Quay and OpenShift to be able to trust th these entities before you can source content. So there are different areas within OpenShift that you need to configure to have the platform be able to trust any external image registry. And this is gonna be everything from the underlying cryo, cryo container runtime to be able to com communicate with the uh, external entity when communicating over a secure socket. You need to explicitly trust these certificates. And then if you're leveraging the image stream feature within OpenShift, you then must be configure additional areas within the platform for you to be able to have the platform itself trust Quay for be able, being able to import content from it. Uh, this is all configurable, and you can configure the registry itself to be specified as insecure, which means that it will bypass certificate validation, but it, this, of course, is not recommended. You should go through steps within the OpenShift documentation to configure the platform to be able to trust OpenShift or Quay itself from an OpenShift standpoint. Now, one of the benefits of OpenShift is to be able to use and build images on the platform. And you can go ahead and leverage Quay as part of this entire process. You can use Quay as a source for images. You can also use for it to be used as the um, the base for any brand new image that you are building on the platform, as well as most importantly, you can use it as a destination for any build that is produced by the platform itself. Uh, there's a great documentation within not only the OpenShift documentation, but also in the community that talks about the different configurations that you need to make to leverage uh, Quay or any external registry as a source of content or destination for an OpenShift build. Two of the areas of concern that you need to be cognizant about are going to be the, the source and destination locations, whether you're using a direct Docker image reference or an image stream. You, can't, you, can, you cannot use a destination image stream with any registry except for the internal registry unless you are using the Quay bridge operator. So you would only be able to use a Docker image by default as a, as a kind for a output from an OpenShift from a, from an OpenShift build to a Quay environment. But most importantly, if you are leveraging Quay itself, you then would need to config in the Quay registry is protected, the authentication and RBAC mechanisms within Quay, you need to configure the applicable push and pull secrets within your build configuration. Now, if you do want to use Quay as the registry for OpenShift, there are a number of things that you need to be cognizant about. This is going to be being able to change some of the configurations around the uh, around the set of image uh, custom resources that are found in any OpenShift environment. You can then begin to list the trust the list of trusted registries, as well as as I mentioned previously, you can configure it to uh, specify that Quay is an insecure registry. 
And part of this configuration, after you define it within the custom resource, is driven by the machine config operator, which will go ahead and configure the underlying cryo metadata and configurations within each individual node. As I mentioned previously as well, image pull and push secrets must be able to be configured if accessing any protected image registries, as well as being able to uh, leverage the Quay Bridge operator to be being the first step towards that journey of tighter integration of OpenShift's registry within Quay. Now, there are a number of common terms between Quay and OpenShift. Uh, I wanted to provide, to provide a moment to kind of give a, some of you might be coming from more of a Quay background, some of you might be coming from more of an OpenShift background. I want to kind of do a one-to-one -one mapping between the different components. An organization within Quay is very analogous to a project or namespace within OpenShift. A repository within Quay itself is similar to an image stream, basically a collection of uh, image tags that point to a single source. Uh, image streams are a bit of a, um, it's very much like a proxy or, or a, um, it's kind of a view over a set of related images. These images can, within OpenShift can actually come from different sources, but in Quay, they're obviously all going to be sourced from within Quay itself. Uh, for being able to manage access from a non-human perspective, uh, robot accounts are available within Quay for you to be able to integrate into external systems like a CI, CD system, or for um, OpenShift itself, uh, being able to have platform talk to Quay, you'd use a robot account that is configured within OpenShift, within Quay itself. Uh, within OpenShift, uh, a non-user account is known as a service account. Uh, being able to, and the Quay Bridge operator will actually take the, the service accounts that are configured in OpenShift and automatically go ahead and create the robot accounts. Uh, a Quay team is analogous to a group within OpenShift and then a build. Both components have a very similar build functionality that is, that is available in terms of function, of function. You obviously have a Docker-based build, which is gonna be in Quay. And then you have, and then you have various types of build uh, components within within OpenShift. You have your Docker, your S2I, your Jenkins, and your tech time based builds, along with a whole new array of build options that are coming in the most recent versions of OpenShift. I'm going to turn it over to Derp, who's going to talk more about the container security operator and some integration with the OpenShift console. Thanks, Andy. So I just realized that the order of the presentation isn't perfect. We should have talked about the QBA, uh, QBO right here because many of the, the, the things Andy just explained are at least partially automated by the QBO. We will talk about a minute, so just consider what I'm talking about here as a small disruption of the flow Andy kicked off. Um, so let me talk about the second operator, which has been mentioned on the original slide. This is the container security operator. Um, in case you don't know, so Quay features a built-in vulnerability scanning. Originally, the, the previous version, version 2, has been limited to operating system package managers for various operating system types, such as uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, obviously, Ubuntu, Debian, MSO Linux, and other distributions, Alpine as well. Uh, and with the newest version of Red Hat Quay, we just introduced the initial support for programming language package managers limited to Python as of today as a tech preview feature. So we could, we want to run uh, it uh, in a more testing uh, environments. We want to get some additional feedback and input and then stabilize it in the next few months and then market as GA with the upcoming versions 3.4. So Claire is a scanning engine effectively, which has been developed by Chorus for Quay. So it's it's really a very specific implementation of a very powerful scanner, which is really supposed to run at scale because you need to keep in mind the the same software we ship as the product with at Quay is what we use also for the hosted uh, software as a service offering called Quedo, one of the five biggest registries out there. And that's why it really matters to us that whatever we do for both Quay and Claire, it needs to run at the scale of our Quedo deployment because this is something which really also differentiates us uh, uh, with from other vendors who are doing registry product as well. So Claire is a very powerful scanner. It's not only used by Quay, Quay.io, and Project Quay. It's also used by several other uh, third-party projects and open source um, and projects. So you might have seen that AWS started to use Claire as the backend scanner for AWS ECR end of last year as well. It's open source as Quay is. There is an upstream repository under the Quay umbrella in GitHub as well. 
And the scan results are shown by default in the Quay UI. Yeah, so there is a deep integration between Quay and Claire. And what we what we try to achieve is that from within OpenShift, so let's assume that the majority of the cluster admin and the developers and the guys who are deploying containerized application on OpenShift, they are mostly using the OpenShift console. And not all of them automatically want to have access to just another UI, which then contains even more information on various images, security, vulnerability information, and stuff like this. So basically, we introduced already with Suite 2 and in the, uh, another operator, the container security operator, which runs on OpenShift, so on the OpenShift cluster Quay is serving content to. And effectively, what it does, it fetches the vulnerability information from Quay and Claire and then stores it within the cluster, so in the CR, and then uh, visualizes it in the OpenShift console. So what it does, it's an operator which is running on OpenShift and watches the pod objects. And each time a pod object is changing, then it fetches, it reaches out to the registry the image has been pulled from and tries to fetch the information uh, from an API, from a security data API. Currently, this is limited to Quay uh, as of today and quite old. So it also works with the hosted version, but we are working with several partners on allowing them to plug in via the same concept into OpenShift as well. Yeah, so it's a it's a custom resource which is stored. It, so the data is there. You can query the custom resource also via a CLI command. I will talk about in a minute. Uh, and then the information it's also shown in the console. So how to deploy the container uh, security operator is fairly easy. So it's shown in the uh, embedded operator hub as part of OpenShift. Uh, you can simply deploy it on your OpenShift cluster and OLM takes care, so the operator lifecycle management takes care of all the prerequisites and everything else you need to do. And as I said, it automatically looks at where the image has been pulled from. So you don't need to configure whether what the URL of your Quay or credit or registry is. Um, as I mentioned, in various views within the OpenShift console, so we initially started with the cluster admin dashboard, but with the most recent uh, OpenShift version, which came out last week, we added a couple of additional views to the OpenShift console to show the vulnerability information. Yeah, So you can see a subset of the data, which is also shown within the Quay UI. And there's also a link to directly hop to the uh, corresponding view within Quay. So from the OpenShift console, you can see the vulnerability data for all this software you are using in your pods in a particular project and also on a cluster level. So there are many different views. It's pretty powerful and it addresses the needs probably of many different target personas who are supposed to use the OpenShift console. And there are, is, there are at least two great um, blocks out there written by our user experience team who helped us with the design and the visualization layout uh, within the OpenShift console. And so there's pretty, a lot of information. And those are just a few new views we added with OpenShift 4.4 um, just a week back. So we continue to enhance the operator and, and the console integration over time. And as I mentioned, you can query the same information, um, which is stored directly in the CR. So keep in mind, originally, we considered to use pod annotations, but then we changed the way based on the feedback primarily from security teams, both internal and external ones that we shouldn't expose vulnerability information to the entire set of users of an OpenShift cluster. So that's why it requires permission. So you, you won't have access uh, by default, but once you have the corresponding permission to query the custom resource, then there are a couple of commands to query the same information um, via a CLI as well. One thing I wanna call out before I move on to the next slide is, that we do not directly interact with Claire because I mentioned earlier, just from a network uh, and security standpoint, Claire doesn't need to be exposed to the outside world. So we are connecting against a Quay API and then Quay fetches the data from Claire. So this is uh, also supposed to make it easier, especially in multi-cluster environments where you really wanna limit the allowed entry points into your environment. So this is the container security operator or the console integration we did as another uh, key aspect, so the second operator. And with that, let me hand over to the third operator. And again, as I said at the very beginning of the presentation, Andy helped us helping working with the internal community and the customer community 
to write the initial prototype. So we work very closely uh, with customers and the external community, really looking at what are their target use cases, what are the things they really want to achieve. And then we started to write the prototype. And over time, we stabilized and extended this operator. And now we just introduced it uh, as one of the uh, top priority feature of Quay Suite 3. And with that, let me hand over to Andy to explain it in further detail. Thanks, Dirk. So for those of you who want to be able to leverage Quay as the internal registry for OpenShift, you can go ahead and use the Quay Bridge Operator to facilitate a number of the steps that you would have to manually configure within uh, Quay itself to have similar parity within uh, from OpenShift to Quay. Uh, when you do enable this feature, any new namespace within OpenShift automatically results in a new organization within Quay. Each image stream that gets created within that namespace uh, creates an analogous repository within Quay. And then the three key service accounts that are created with any new OpenShift project automatically get uh, synchronized as uh, robot accounts within Quay itself. And that allows you to be able to push and pull images from the Quay um, a repository automatically with an OpenShift without any additional configurations from your standpoint. Uh, we do mo support multi-cluster setup through a namespace mapping feature, so basically, or a cluster mapping feature. You basically give a prefix that are that is added to every new organization within Quay that allows you to separate and segregate the different uh, organizations within OpenShift. Uh, any new as I mentioned, all secrets in, from in each robot account are in, within an org are automatically created in an OpenShift project. Uh, the service accounts uh, are really being are really leveraged within OpenShift to be able to facilitate being able to pull Quay images as part of a source for a build, a source for a runtime, or as the destination, or be able to trust Quay and push to Quay as a result of a build from OpenShift, and really. That's one of the benefits of the Quay Bridge Operator. As I mentioned way back earlier in the presentation, that by default, OpenShift does not allow an image stream. Destination is part of a build output in OpenShift. The Quay Bridge Operator uses a functionality within OpenShift called a mutating UFO configuration to automatically wire up Quay as the destination for any new build that is leveraging an image stream in OpenShift. And that's it's really just the beginning of the tighter integration in OpenShift regarding Quay itself. Now, OpenShift and uh, the Quay, the operator, as we mentioned, is a, another automated feature within OpenShift. It does require some initial configuration um, to get going out of the box. It does require some a little bit of manual setup, but once you get the manual setup complete, uh, you can then be able to leverage it to its full functionality. Uh, a simple use case is I create a new project in OpenShift, a brand new organization gets created in Quay, all the robot accounts gets configured along with the pull and push secrets. If you want to go ahead then and create a brand new app, um, I just happen to pick my favorite, my, the .NET example application is the one that I always use for a lot of my demos. There's not a lot of dependencies that come along with it. It will go ahead and perform the new build in OpenShift, pull the builder image from the Reddit container catalog, go ahead and perform that build, get the dependencies for the image itself as well as then push the resulting image to the brand new organization in Quay into the repository that was created as a result of image stream creation that is also created automatically as part of the sample app in OpenShift. Uh, that new deployment deployment that is generated by the, the sample application automatically then references the image stream, which points to Quay, which then allows it to be triggered automatically at the result at the end of a build which will then result in the deployment of the image in Quay. And then once you're all done, you went from zero to hero, and you want to clean up the resources, you can go ahead and be able to uh, delete the project in OpenShift, which will then delete the associated organization in Quay. Very much like the Quay operator itself, the Quay bridge operator is deployed using the uh, operator hub in the OLM, which is which is part of OpenShift. And as I mentioned, there is a, a bit of a setup process that you will need to go through. Some of it has to do with the configuration of that mutating mobile configuration. This allows you to be able to, to have the operator intercept some of the build in, um, triggering and wire up to talk to Quay automatically. 
Now, as part of that, it's really being able to rewire and kind of hack image streams and the underlying components of OpenShift. And that's really where the functionality of that I want to call out is, is this functionality of image streams. So image streams is basically an abstraction of a container image repositories within OpenShift. Images referenced within an image stream can reside either in the internal registry or an external registry like Coida IO or a on-prem Coida that we've been talking about throughout the course of this presentation. However, when you do leverage a external registry, you lose some of the functionality that are found as part of the internal native uh, OpenShift registry. Uh, this is going to be the automatic uh, role-based access control configuration that is automatically defined as part of any new project in OpenShift as well as the automatic notifications when new images and tags are available uh, from the image source. So if I push a new image to play, OpenShift won't automatically be able to determine or won't even know if a new image is available. You must be able to tell OpenShift that a new image is available for its use. So one of the benefits, uh, one of the features that is found in OpenShift is that you can configure an image stream to be scheduled, which means that it will go out and pull a remote source at a given interval. So that is one way to get around that, um, or at least one enhancement that you can look if you don't want to manually import an image stream from a remote source. Now, the Quay ecosystem, the entire ecosystem, this is everything from Quay and Claire is um, can be integrated into a CI and CD pipeline. And as I demonstrate here uh, in this slide, you can integrate Quay at number of different, in the ecosystem at different points. Everything from being able to pull the golden image that you have within your organization as a source for content for a new build in OpenShift. You can then use it as a destination as part of the result of a build. You can then use Claire to be able to scan that image and then you can go ahead and obviously use it for deployment time. Once you've gone ahead and you've gone through the approval, the appropriate approval processes that any organization will have as part of their software-defined uh, software lifecycle through its various environments, whether it be a dev stage or uh, production environment, you can put that. You can integrate all of those steps, checks and balances, and approval processes that are found in most organizations into a full flow to be able to govern which images are. Uh, deployed as part of your OpenShift deployments. Now, Quay and how it be, being able to trigger new deployments on OpenShift, the bridge operator will automatically go in and trigger a new uh, a new deployment when a new image uh, is pushed to Quay itself. And then it, that's obviously if Quay itself is uh, used as a destination for or the source for that image on OpenShift. As I mentioned, if you aren't using the bridge operator and you are just using an external registry, by default, images that you push to Quay will not result in a new triggered uh, 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 deployment on OpenShift if you're using an image stream. They must be either manually imported through the OC import image feature, which can be integrated into a CI CD flow, or you can configure the image stream to be scheduled. Uh, additional configurations and integrations can be, uh, all, can be also included to be able to notify OpenShift that a new image has been pushed to Quay, as well as other actions that have been uh, found in a repository through Quay's feature-rich uh, assortment of notifications. Uh, you can uh, integrate that directly into a CI process, as well as uh, being able to integrate it into other solutions. I've actually gone ahead and uh, integrated it into Ansible Tower. New image is pushed to Quay, go ahead and call Ansible Tower to perform certain actions. So really, uh, the notification feature in, in Quay allows you to integrate with a number of Red Hat's uh, feature-rich uh, solutions. Very similar to how Quay can trigger uh, deployments on OpenShift, it can trigger builds on OpenShift, especially if you're using image streams, very much the similar process that I had mentioned on my prior slide, which is basically if you're using an image stream, it will not trigger a new build automatically. You must import the image stream or have it scheduled. And being able to, and then the obviously the image that you can uh, build on OpenShift can be pushed to Quay itself as the destination. I'm going to turn it over to Dirk, who's going to talk a little bit more about Quay's garbage collection feature and OpenShift. Dirk. Yeah. Thank you. So one of the other great features of Quay is that it features a zero downtime garbage collection. 
Yeah, so you have tag retention policies and it automatically cleans up the, the underlying images over time. The challenge here is obviously that OpenShift doesn't know that Quay um, yeah, effectively uh, deleted a tag and deleted the finally blob. So there's a certain risk that you will de going to delete something which is still in use by some of the clusters Quay is serving content to. And that's why we started to develop a couple of features to address this. Yeah, so as of today, it's it's really that if the image gets deleted or the tag gets deleted, then obviously if the image is still in use, then it might break an existing deployment. We developed a feature which unfortunately slipped the, the current release, but hopefully will be in one of the future releases, which is the image awareness in Quay. So with the operators we already have, we developed something which allows you, if you are going to Quay and start to manually delete an image or a tag, then it shows you where this image or the layers underneath are still in use, both inside the registry, but also in the clusters Quay is serving content to. Yeah, so basically the other way around that what Caesar does, we have the information within Quay where this image is still in use and based on this knowledge, we can effectively prevent that we accidentally uh, uh, or intentionally delete an image uh, which is still in use by any of your running pods or referenced by a CR. So this is a pretty powerful feature, which is also part of this large umbrella of features we're developing to deeper integrate Quay into the Kubernetes platform and to provide a superior uh, value coming out of the Quay features plus the integration into the corresponding platform. And this brings me to the last slide of this presentation. And I probably need to update this slide uh, again based on a couple of, of brainstorming sessions we had just this week. Yeah, so this is a slide I took from the Quay Roadmap Dev. So the deeper integration into the Kubernetes and Opshift platform, this has been, has been and will be the top priority for us on the Quay side. And as you can see on the slide, we already delivered a bunch of great features. And those have been the features we talked about in this presentation. There was a, already a, a lot of progress we made in the past few months, but still we have plenty of stuff we want to do in the midterm and in the, also in our long-term planning, such as more deeply integrating into all the extended capabilities which are part of OpenShift, such as the full platform monitoring stack, the alerting stack, logging and dashboards. Um, we have a community uh, contribution coming up on the OAuth integration for OpenShift. I already mentioned the image users awareness. We introduced with Quay Suite 3 as marked, clearly marked as experimental, the OCI artifact spec support, which allows us to store Helm charts. And obviously Helm charts are a thing as well on the OpenShift side. So there's plenty of, of room for improvements there to deeply integrate Helm-based workflows into OpenShift. We already touched the pipeline integration and we are working with the builds and pipeline teams on OpenShift. Uh, how a deeper integration into the pipeline and build automation in OpenShift could look like. And then we have a couple of other stuff we are working on with both internal and external community, such as the Notary V2 effort to bring in signing into both in Quay and OpenShift. We have a very powerful epic designed and which is uh, explained in further detail within the roadmap deck, which is quota management and enforcement. And one of the blocker for quota management and enforcement and automated pruning has been this image awareness I mentioned. And then I also briefly touched the support enhanced support for aggregate environment. So there's plenty of stuff coming up in future releases, but we believe already today, we provide a very great integration of those two products into each other. And hopefully this will satisfy the majority of requirements of both our Quay and OpenShift customers. Andy, any final words you wanna say before we close the session? Uh, I just wanna let you know, everyone, who has the opportunity to be able to work with Quay, especially on OpenShift, go ahead and try it out. I know there are a number of courses in uh, the GPTE team has out there regarding being able to, if you had never used OpenShift in Quay itself, going ahead and leveraging some of the courses that are available for you to learn more about the Quay ecosystem and um, have fun. It's a great, great tool. I love it. I work on it on a daily basis. I work on it with my customers. They love it. Go ahead, learn about it, learn about the features. And I know that there's going to be a lot more tighter integration with Quay and OpenShift moving forward. And uh, it's going to be a great ride. So once again, thanks a lot for attending today's session. 
And it was a great point, and I forgot to mention for our external open source community and customer community, of course, there is a free evaluation form for Red Hat Quay on all the Quay product pages and the Red Hat customer portal at redhat.com and at openshift.com. And of course, we also have a very strong open source community, so projectquay.io, and we are shipping at, at the end of each sprint, we are shipping the final builds as the sprint results to the open source community. Those are available uh, as well. So there's plenty of, of, of ways to play around with Quay and all the features we mentioned and also the upcoming features which are under development. So don't hesitate to join our internal and external uh, communities, ask questions, contribute, ask for features, provide us feedback. We, we really appreciate your input and feedback there. Many thanks for watching. Enjoy your day.